introduce uh, the next keynote, the future of cybersecurity. And I'll take this opportunity to introduce the speakers before you. We have two speakers for the session. Mr. Kanchan Malik, Regional Head, Eastern India, Nepal, Bhutan, and Bangladesh, Trend Micro India Private Limited. Mr. Kanchan Malik has an experience of total 19 years in the IT security, information security domain, cyber security consulting fields, especially in the areas of pre sales activities, technical marketing, account sales activities, channel sales, and product positioning, and other managerial areas. Before I call the speakers on to the days, we have the other speaker, Mr. Abhijit Biswas, technical consultant, Trend Micro India Private Limited, who I'll introduce before you. Mr. Abhijit is well versed with technologies like firewalls, UTMs, mail security, web security, endpoint, anti ABT segments. He has work experience with system integrators as well as with OEMs. I would now like all of you, ladies and gentlemen, to tell you this, to put your hands together for Mr. Kachin Malik, Regional Head, Eastern India, the Bar Hotel and Bangladesh, Trent Micro India Private Limited. A huge round of applause for him, please. Uh, good evening to all of you. I'm hearing only one noise. Good evening to all of you. Thanks a lot. I think Dhaka is today is a holiday for you, right? And we are spoiling your holiday like anything. And we are talking about future of cyber security by spoiling a holiday. Oh my god. So uh, it happens when uh, there is a disaster inside your organization and you think about cyber security future, not like this. Well, uh, a good introduction given about me. I think you uh, came to know about my name and everything. I just wanted to query I mean, to everyone. How many of you have heard about Trend Micro? Just raise your hands. Well, can I ask one more, one more question? What is this company about? What is it into? Sorry? Security, antivirus, firewall. Okay. So yes. So a lot of queries are there. What is it to? We are not talking about products. Let me be very honest. Uh, as uh, we will be talking about the future aspect and what is the thought process from a company's perspective, from a security consultant perspective, from a requirement perspective from a disaster perspective. So we should cover all these areas and we'll try to make it brief and more interactive so that uh, we will have an interaction with all of you, may not be one to one, but all of you. And we'll try to position our step, of course, vis-a-vis -vis -vis the cyber security, that where should we fit in? Do you really require us? Do you require really thinking about the cyber security? In what respect? That is what we are going to talk. So uh, I have my team over here. We have uh, our presence also in Bangladesh. Although we were uh, more into US, Japan, uh, Southeast Asia, China. And now the entire focus is on this region. Looking at the way Bangladesh is growing digitally. And of course, the type of uh, threats which are coming up over here, it's, it becomes our duty to come and tell you a direction, that which direction you should go. You will go or not, that depends on you, but it is as a, as a duty of any cyber security organization to come and tell you the path. Well, uh, I have Mr. Atikur Rahman who is actually a raiser of uh, Dhaka. He is their single point of contact. We have our technical person over here and the entire India Singapore team is the backend team which will be helping all the customers to design the solution and think about the future of cybersecurity. Well, uh, we have started our journey over here one year back and let me tell you, the race is uh, not fast, the race is a very slow. We want to go slow, we don't want to go fast in this region. Uh, we have backed up one of the biggest banks. I think Black Bank is one of our biggest customers uh, where we have owned the solution over there and given our full support, not product, the support that they require for 
handling these uh, threats and other things. I'll not take much time because a good story is going to be presented in front of you. I don't want to spoil that time. Please listen to the story and try to map what is there and what can be done. And we have a very good storyteller, technical person, who actually gives this kind of analogies to a lot of places in India and outside India. I'll call upon Mr. Abhijit Viswas. And uh, you can think of, you, you may not be thinking of what he is going to say, but you can map it with the kind of requirement that you will be coming in the near future. And the future of cyber security will be in front of you. I promise you, once the session is finished, you are going to come one on one to us and ask about what could be done. Abhijit Biswas. Good evening. Am I audible? Yeah. Fantastic. But I cannot see the back side of the stage. But anyway. uh, what Kajan is talking about, he told me that we have a meeting on a Friday. I thought, Friday? How can it be possible? No, 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 it's possible because the market is like that. I'm not able to have that. So, you know, my job is to tell a story, not only the technology. But I talk lesser things about my products, but you know, I have to talk about the products also. So when I used to go to the customer places for consulting the security, then I find a lot of gaps. They know what is the problem, but they don't know the root cause of their problems. So the next slides will be for that. So let me start with my group in the day and then we'll try it. So let me jump into the slides. So if I take an analogy of Bangladesh army structure, okay, because no technology is beyond us. If I take the analogy of Bangladesh army structure, then you will find that you have a Bangladesh army, you have a Navy, Bangladesh Navy, we have a Bangladesh Air Force, along with Bangladesh Coast Guard, and Bangladesh Border State. Right? Do you think all the security which are in places in a normal practice should be set together in a single place? No. It should be placed where it should be. You have your police department also. Okay? In a lot more places, I found that I have got a pen meter device, I have got an antivirus. Do I need any more security? Or I have got a firewall or UTM in place in my network. Do I need any other security inside my network? So that time I used to take this analogy that you have a pen meter security force in case of a water security force, but you need a police take care of inside what is happening inside the kitchen. You have got an intelligence department also, which will gather the intelligence and use the intelligence for the sake of security. Now, if I print this technology in other way, just like that, your security system is Bangladesh Army will act as an endpoint kind of stuff. Your Navy will act as a web security stuff. Your mail security can be replaced by your Air Force. Coast Guard can be given protection for your servers. And overall network can be protected by your internal mechanism. This things are okay? Don't you think any other technology to protect your assets? What do you think? Do you need your police? Yes, you need. So all kinds of stuff like EDR and all other technologies like encryption, DLP, that should come in picture and work along with the existing technology. Don't you think so? It is required. <laughs> now, though we have all those kind of a technology in place, but we need the intelligence. And to gather the intelligence, we have some information who can gather the intelligence outside from outside country. 
some are gathering the information or images from inside the country. Don't you think it is required? And all of the above, there is a chief of staff who can take care of these things. And there is a admin or president or prime minister of Bangladesh who can say okay, what is required based on the given inputs, based on the given intelligence. So network is like that only. If you think your mail, it needs to get secure. If you think your web server, network, endpoints, all of them need security. But the main part is those security should talk with each other. If they don't talk with each other, what can happen? Just assume that you have hired your, say, Air Force from a different country. Will you do that? No. No. Can you hire your border security force from other different organization or country? Can you do that? No. Do you think they should talk among themselves? Because if they don't talk among themselves, you will not be able to identify any intruder. They should talk, they should share their intelligence. So our motto is that only. Our technology is like that only. So, in short, in our technology, we are pressing our solutions in that way. We have got a, in left side, we have got a solutions that is called sandboxing or NTAPD, which can take care of creating intelligence, which, which can actually create the intelligence and share about the other traditional security solutions. And DDI Direct, DDD or DD Director or Apex Central would be the prime think tank who can take the decision to what intelligence should I use with whom. Now, in the right side, the product name is written there, Deep Security, IMSV, Apex One, IWSV. These are the products. Now, Apex Central will decide which intelligence should be placed in them. Now, assume. In your network, what are the security you have? You may have the security, but do they talk with each other? If they don't talk, then how can you protect a multi-vector attack using those security solutions? What do you mean by multi-vector? In case of a multi-vector crime, one attack will come via endpoint, it may use your web, it may use your mail, or vice versa. It can come via mail, it can use the web, it can use the endpoint. It can go to your servers, it can do lateral movements. Can you protect this kind of attack using different different technologies? You can stop me anytime, you can ask me the question anytime, but I don't know how much time is left to give the answers. So, the verdict will go for you. You must tell the verdict. Can you protect your network assets or information or data or critical assets using different technologies who cannot talk among each other? Come on. <laughs> I have expecting an answer. It may be no, it may be yes. There's no way. No way. Then what are we doing? Now the question is what are we doing here? What we have done to do the integration, what we have done to use the intelligence which is actually generated by one solution, who can actually identify that kind of attack in any part of the network. It will be in the perimeter, it will be anywhere else. But the first and foremost thing which I want to tell you, <coughs> sorry, which I want to tell you that you cannot rely on a single part solution. <laughs> Just like all the feature sets should be placed in a UTM and it should be placed in a perimeter and I'm safe. You need to understand protocols, whether this security solution understands your protocol or not. So have you ever checked in which protocol it is working? Last week I went to a customer call and they are asking me, why do I need IPS? I have IP and it's the next gen IP 
Now this is a really basic stuff. Antivirus cannot understand all the protocols. It can hardly understand any nuclear protocols. What about the other ports and protocols? Who will take care of them? Why do I need sandboxing? You also know that. Why do I need sandboxing? So my goal is to tell you a story, and based on that story, you need to identify what solution you need to identify. Because the time is very short, and I have a hell of a lot of things to say. So I'm cutting short and putting it in the three to four slides only. Is there any question from the audience? Any question? No question? Are we talking equal? I don't think so. Now the thing is that, let me come to my company policy also, I need to take some time for talking about the products of my company. Now if you see, okay, this is a skeleton of a network and here you can find it out which solution can be placed there. We have got an IPS, the name of the IPS is the tipping point, the guys who are working in a security market or in a federal security market, they knew IPS, they knew the name of tipping point, this is the oldest IPS device in the world. It is very small. <laughs> That's the reason you can. Can you come to the front? It's in the easy. Can you do something? It will be a technology to I can talk with you one more if there is an question. So, should I present this slide? Okay. So, we have got IPS device. Let me take it verbally. This is IPS device, the name is Tipping Point, which can be placed anywhere. As it is IPS, you can place it anywhere, just like firewalls. We have got a bridge detection solution or sandboxing solution. It can be also placed anywhere because our solution is not truly inline solution. Just like sandboxing, it is it can set it can sit anywhere. It is waiting for the feed from the sensors. We have got a email security solution, which is very much required now nowadays. We have got a web security solutions. It's a proxy community for the income anti malware solutions. We have got a server security solution in place. <coughs> now you can ask, why do we need server security solution? Now the thing is that, in case of server security, how many of you just think that our traditional endpoint security solution is enough for your servers? Is there anyone who can think like that? Then I can talk with you and try to... No. 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 And the product name is Deep Security. Apart from that, we have got a... Sorry. <laughs> Apart from that, we have got an endpoint protection also in place with a lot of new technologies, that's like uh, EDR functionality, we have got a heavier, we have got a easier also. And you know one thing, the beautiful part is that our web security solution, our web security solution, our server security solution, endpoint solution, our IPS, all of them can talk with each other. All of them can talk with each other. If my web security solution can detect one malware, which comes through mail, that intelligence can pass through many points also. It can be useful for the service security also. I can use the same intelligence for the IPS also. <coughs> Sorry. Don't you think it's a very good point? Okay, you can share the intelligence among each other and you can use this technology for the good things. Apart from that, apart from that, in our server security solution, especially because we know the servers are the key 
pieces in our network where all the data, all the critical data are stored. So you need to have a special care for the service. And if I can talk with uh, one one with everyone, I can find that how many of you actually timely patching your service? Hardly some. Because we need to take care of productivity, because we cannot have much downtime for the service. So that is the reason we cannot put the patches on the service on time. And until you don't patch the service, the vulnerability will look its own. And using that vulnerability, it can be exploited easily. So we have a solution, it is called patchless technology. You, you need not to use your VM patch to cover that vulnerability, we can create a virtual patch for that particular vulnerability. Any question on that? I guess that. No question. I don't have, <coughs> I don't have nothing to say much. So, if you want, I can conclude my session over here. <coughs> Any question? We still have two minutes in the back. Okay, thank you. So my name is Abhiji Krishnas and there is a guy in Bangladesh with whom you can contact. And if there are any questions left, you can ask them. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Chief Rizasa. May I request you to remain on stage for just a minute? And I will also request Mr. Kanchan Malik to kindly come on stage, please. And I'd like to request Mr. K.K. Mahapatra of my secretary and head Infocom ABB Private Limited to kindly come forward and present mementos to both our speakers here. Thank you very much, Mr. Kachan Malik, for sharing your thoughts with us. And uh, thank you, Mr. Abhijit Vishwas, for sharing your thoughts with us. This has been a very interesting session. And for those of you present here, if you'd like uh, uh, this, uh, the slide that has been shown, our, both our speakers are willing to share them with you. So you can get in touch with them uh, once they are out of, uh, once they are off the stage. You can contact them, you can email them as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we will now... <coughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will now come back to a very interesting session, but before that, we have a very small, very small break for tea, and it's just for 10 minutes. And I think we can bring, they can bring their tea inside if you wish, and uh, please.